Hello, fellow travelers. I'm going to try something new today. I call it, what the f*** did I just do? You know how professional athletes will review footage from past performances to see what they did and figure out what they can do next time to improve? That's pretty much what this video is going to be. I'm going to look back through video footage of me creating my latest digital painting and talk about what I did and what I think I could do better next time. Specifically, today I'm going to focus on shading. So, I suppose I should probably start with my general process for shading. I'm using Clip Studio Paint, but this should work for any drawing program with the capability for layers, which uh, is just about all of them, uh, even most free ones. So first of all, I put different figures in my plan drawing on different layers so that they are kept completely separate. For instance, uh, here I put the background, the owl, the staff, the glowing ball effect, and our young wizard all on different layers. In retrospect, I probably should have put the tree and the fence on their own layer as well, but, you know, live and learn. That's what this is for. Once everything is in layers, and all the basic coloring is complete, I add at least one layer on top of each coloring layer to put the shading on and lower the opacity somewhere around 30 to 40 percent. I may adjust that later if I decide the shadows are too dark or not dark enough. It really depends on the piece. I also clip the shadow layer to the layer below it so I don't have to be careful about going over the lines as it were. If you don't know what clipping is, well, that might take a while to explain, and it's probably somewhat different in different drawing programs anyway, so uh, perhaps you should Google it. Then I choose my color. Many beginner artists think that shadows should be just black or gray, you know, basically just make whatever you're drawing darker in the shaded areas. I know I was certainly one of them. However, the truth is, that you actually want to shift the colors of what's in shadow in the opposite direction on the color wheel than your light source. For instance, if you have yellow light, which is generally the case since most of our real life light sources tend toward yellowish, you'll want to shift your shaded areas toward blue. In this case, our glowy ball of magic is the strongest light source and it is sort of yellowish for the most part. So I'll make my shadow color blue. So now that I've covered the general process, let me just fast forward this to the point where I started the shading portion of this piece. I'll put a link to the full speed paint video for this piece in the card and in the description. Here we go. It looks like I started with shading in the tree. And here's where I should have put the tree and the fence on a different layer. And my shady was kind of sloppy on the edge where the tree is. Uh, if I had put it on a layer in front of the rest of the background, I could have clipped it to the tree layer and avoided having to clean that up later. No, oh, well, it's a small thing. We'll just move on. Oh, my dog. This hair. I had so much trouble with this hair. Uh, throughout this process, I kept coming back to this hair. Uh, just never quite looked right. This particular temp was just too, I don't know, rough looking. Uh, we'll, we'll just keep on past for now. I'll, I'll end up coming back to it in a bit. The face, yeah. The face was especially critical for this piece since I planned to remove the lines I'd drawn, so light and shadow was going to be the only way to show any features. This is another area where I had to try several times before I got it. Well... I don't want to say before I got it right, because more like before I got it to a point where I could live with it. Now then, the shadow on the jaw and the shadow cast by the jaw and the neck. Differentiating between the two was problematic. Here I tried to use a slightly darker, less saturated color to make the neck shadow, but the effect ended up being too subtle for me to see very well. I could sort of see where one stops and the other started, but it didn't really work very well once I zoomed back out. Okay, here I'm going to be trying to tackle the face again. 
I realized that the shading was a little too light when the global glowiness was added back in. So I tried to make it a little darker, which also didn't look right in the end. Uh, it was about here that I decided to just say fuck it and erase and start over with the face shading. Started to try to preserve what I'd done with the hair, but then realized that wasn't really looking right either and just erased the whole kit and caboodle to start over. This time I used thicker, less feathery lines to shade the hair and face, which also didn't really work too well on the hair. I think I realized it didn't look right fairly quickly and just moved on, just figured I would come back to it later. Here I realized I could use a second shading layer on top of the main one in order to create a deeper shadow in some areas since the two different colors really wasn't giving me the effect I was going for. So here I went back and reshaded the features of the face with this technique in mind, also using a combination of hard and soft shadows to better simulate how the shadows would actually fall when you have a combination of uh, you know, definite shapes that are casting shadows and shadows that are just cast by the roundness of objects as they gradually face away from the light. I also realized I'd made the lips far too dark and used a soft eraser tool to kind of back off the deep shading so that it looked more like the slightly different colored flesh that it is. I probably should have just colored them in directly to the base layers, but uh, this seemed to work well enough. Now here I went back to the hair one final time. Thicker lines just didn't work, so I erased them and made much thinner lines using my original drawing lines as a guide as far as where the tufts should go, which worked much better. Uh, then I just did a little bit of cleanup, adding some eye detail. I realized then that the hair still needed a bit more, added some softer shadows to give the hair more body and counteract some of the flatness I was still seeing. Then it was finally time to leave the head and shave the rest of the body. Uh, this was pretty straightforward. I shaded the areas, pointed away from the light, put the shadow of the arm that's just beneath the light. When I got to the book, I did need to use the second shading layer again to show the strap since it and the book were both the same color, so I needed that darker shadow to show the outlines of the strap. Same again on the hands, so details would be visible. Uh, the fur on the boots was a little intricate, but also pretty straightforward at this point. Same with the ruffle on his sleeve and the bracelet thing holding it in place. Uh, then it was time for highlights. Uh, for the most part, I just put the highlights on the same layers as the shading, but for the main body, I ended up deciding to create a separate layer for it and put it with the two shadow layers in a folder together, then clip the folder itself to the color layer, since otherwise doing so for the highlights layer wouldn't be possible without releasing the clipping on the shading, which just wouldn't work. For the eyes here, I wanted to make sure the highlights were particularly bright and sharp, so I actually went ahead and put it directly on the color layer. Did the same later when I got to the owl. From here, it was a pretty simple job to add the highlights to all the areas where the light would be particularly bright, and then uh, on to do some finishing touches. Unfortunately, this also included adding a softer shadow to the jawline, which, uh, that was a mistake. Uh, once I was done, I realized that it just made him look like he had a 5 o'clock shadow, particularly when you zoomed out. Which, is not a huge deal, but it made him look a little less young than what I was aiming for. Alright then, that's all. I think... Uh, learned a bit from reviewing this footage and i hope that anyone who's still here has too if you like this video be sure to share it and also hit that like button if you'd like to continue with me on my artistic journey and see my speed paints practice sessions and more hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell thank you for coming along on this leg of my journey with me and i hope to see you on future stops along the road 
Perhaps you could even stop in for a drink or a snack with me and my friends on my other channel, Fire Drake's Tavern. That's all for now. And again, thank you for watching. And remember, it's not about the destination, but it's the journey itself that matters.